to this week's episode of the Good Dram Show with me, Chris Goodrum. As per usual, a big thank you to everybody that watched last week's episode of the show, liked, commented, all that kind of stuff. Very, very much appreciated. Um, I think last week's episode of the show went down quite well. Um, certainly got a lovely email from Clash who um, saying they really enjoyed the the, the, the review. So um, yeah, everybody's everybody's a happy bunny, which is uh, which is um, very cool and um, very Easter. <laughs> Didn't even think of that, you know. Um, anyway enough about that we're on to uh, this week's episode of the show and as you know i like to do the occasional left of field slightly odd weird episode of the show um and today is absolutely no exception and um today's episode of the show is about english rum mm, yeah although one is not technically an english rum um only two of the uh, um uh, distilleries uh, that i'm looking at actually uh, our distilleries <laughs> produce their own rum here in England one isn't an English rum but obviously we will get on to, to that uh, when I s introduce the lineup. and as there's three different um, uh, three different uh, companies involved here I thought the easiest thing to do is I'll just in as I introduce the lineup I'll just tell you a little bit about each of the three different uh, different sets of rums so um, yeah so like I said I'm just gonna crack on with uh, today's lineup and um, so, Mesh it in with the with the waffle as I say. Right, okay, so first uh, set of three rums that we're going to be looking at is uh, a collaboration uh, between um, the Henston Distillery in Shropshire and a um, Michelin-starred chef called Adam Purnell, who is otherwise known as um, the um, I was about to say Yorkshire Ripper then. Oh, God, no. Um, <laughs> the, the Shropshire lad. Oh, Jesus. Um, where did that suddenly come from? I, I, I told you this was going to be a bit of a left-field episode of the show. <laughs> anyway, so... Um, and the, 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 the history, as you know, Henston are primarily a whisky distillery. I have, you know, done an episode of the show on their whisky in the past. And, um, but in sort of 2019, they, they decided they were going to dabble with making a rum. And um, I have no idea why, but they decided to ferment the um, molasses sugar, apparently, using um, bread yeast. I have no idea why they opted to use bread yeast, but indeed that is what they did. Um, so they created this first batch of rum back in 2019 and thought it was god awful. Um, <laughs> they said it was far too lact lactic, apparently. Um, so they turned it all into uh, into hand sanitizer when we uh, had uh, you know COVID and went into lockdown. Um, apparently they did keep a little bit of uh, it aside for you know um, evaluation purposes and uh, a couple of years down the line they actually quite liked what they did so um, <laughs> but it's after that they obviously I mean maybe they'll attempt to recreate it again there you go that's a that's a new one could they could call it sort of like the lockdown special rum or something like that mind you it's probably lost oh, this whole lockdown business is probably you know it's all too far in the past now really isn't it well ish um, anyway so they carried on making rum in with using um, distillers uh, yeast and apparently uh, the, the rum that they have produced is is pretty good so they teamed up like I said with uh, with this uh, chef called Adam Purnell to create these three and so the first one we'll be looking at is the uh, charcoal filtered white rum so bottled at 41 percent the second bottling we'll be looking at is their golden rum in inverted commas because it's actually not um, bottled as a golden rum it's actually bottled as a cherry wood rum um, because in each bottle there's a, a, a piece of cherry wood and apparently uh, the idea is that the longer the piece of cherry wood is left in the alcohol the more the cherry wood will influence the the rum in the bottle so it will be a constant evolution uh, which should be interesting I must admit I don't know how long um, the cherry wood had been in this particular sample because it was as you can see a sample rather than a full bottle and the third um, of the three rums in the uh, Shropshire Lads um, uh, rum range is the toasted spice rum uh, so the spices that were used in this uh, particular rum were fennel uh, black pepper pimento cardamom 
and some vanilla as well so that is uh, that's the three that we shall be starting with next bottling we'll be moving on great sample bottle isn't it um, this is uh, the uh, Beaufort Spirits um, three tied smoked botanical rum Whew, try saying that after you've had a few of them um, now like I said although um, uh, Beaufort are a UK based company um, or an English company the product isn't made isn't distilled in the ill should we say the rums that go into this rum are not distilled in the UK they take a blend of uh, three-year-old Dominican Republic column still uh, rum um, along with some Jamaican high ester funk rum uh, from pot still rum so Jamaican high ester funky could only be getting down with the Hampton um, yeah and uh, they use some Caribbean white rum uh, both pot and column still uh, so this is uh, vatted together with some botanicals those botanicals are gorse oats and elderflower and then it is oak smoked for three tides now you're probably thinking what the hell is the three tides business and I had to do some research although they did mention it on their website uh, interestingly enough I, their, their website doesn't really tell you an awful lot about the company themselves apart from it was founded by some people in 2016 17 uh, initially set up to make uh, a smoked gin in actual fact which was uh, I think quite quite interesting one of those sort of things you kind of look at and think hmm that's probably not going to work um, but then you taste it and you realize it's actually pretty damn good um, the smoke uh, isn't too overpowering the gin uh, it's kind of a, a classic sort of um, london -y dry style um, but obviously we're not talking about the gin today because nobody watches gin episodes of the show anymore um, not that I've made one for ooh, years anyway so this whole three tides business is actually tied into piracy and um, it references a place called Execution Dock in London, which is near um, Wapping, apparently, which is where they basically executed pirates. Um, and um, some interesting uh, things that I never knew about piracy, but uh, uh, apparently, so they'd lead them up to the, uh, the the gallow, and they would have the you know the, the last rites, and they'd have their sort of you know final say, and all that kind of stuff, or the dying speech, as it's called, and um, they would often. Uh, either sort of take the opportunity to you know recant their sins so to speak or uh, to basically sort of try and right a few wrongs anyway um now with normal hanging <laughs> normal hanging as if hanging is normal um but with normal hanging apparently the rope is quite long so when when they sort of like open the trap doors it kind of breaks your neck so it's pretty quick um but when they hung pirates apparently um, they used a shorter rope so it kind of prolonged the, the hanging and they didn't die of a, a broken neck they would just slowly asphyxiate and apparently the body would thrash around <laughs> which became known as the marshal's dance um, another sort of grim interesting sort of uh, little thing piece of information you find out about so basically um yeah, so you've got this pirate, he's kind of thrashing around doing the martial dance, and um, with sort of usual criminals, what they would normally do is then cut them down once they'd sort of, like, their necks had snapped and that, and that would be it. But apparently with pirates, they didn't. They basically wanted to sort of leave the body hanging there as a kind of, uh, as a deterrent, shall we say, and they would leave the body hanging there for three tides. Hence, here you have the... Um, where the name came from now i don't know the sort of if if the uh, the company itself has a link to whopping maybe that's where that they're you know they're, they're based i honestly don't know i probably should have asked a bit a few more questions but i didn't it was a bit of a kind of last minute oh what am i oh yeah i got that let, let me stick that in the lineup um so yeah this is <laughs> coming back to the juice because i mean i mean great story at the end of the day um and uh, obviously you know, really intriguing packaging i mean this isn't the actual bottle as you can see on the um uh on the uh the the, the so on the on the the title page because uh, this is the bottle they actually use as uh, for the five cl little they do a little gift box with the glass and the five cl of both the gin and the um, uh, and the rum and uh, so that's that's the bottle so really cool really cool quite cool um, but as I often say it's not about how cool the bottle is it's yeah you can fill in the rest of it 
And finally, <laughs> after all of that, we're coming back to an, an actual distillery. So we're looking at two rums that were just made at the West Midlands distillery. Um, now again, really intriguing distillery, has to be said. And uh, I was at a tasting that was presented by um, uh, the owner, Jordan Lum, uh, a few weeks ago when he was uh, actually sort of showing their whiskey because this was what he's really into. They, he set the distillery up. Uh, essentially in his back bedroom I believe um, and was doing it sort of as a sort of part-time on the side kind of venture uh, you know rectifying gins and um, eventually decided to jack in his sales job and um, uh, went full-time at it and eventually you know, got together the, the the money to build a distillery itself rather than working out of his uh, <laughs> sort of you know back room which I suppose if you've got it all kind of a bit wrong you know ooh, your house can get blown up I suppose but anyway uh, it didn't um, and he sort of set out the, to obviously cr carry on making the gin he also makes this uh, rum as well um, and we'll be looking at that one first this is the uh, spiced black rum and well it is pretty black. Um, it's actually more purpley in the glass, and that's basically um, down to uh, what was it? P. Oh God, what was it? Years. I haven't actually got it written down here, which is a bit of a stupid thing. I mean, there's obviously some caramel at play here. One imagines, but the um, that he does a um, a dark country gin, which I think uses pea flour or something like that to colour it. Um, anyway, the spices that are used in the spiced black rum are allspice, cinnamon, Madagascan vanilla, and coconut blossom syrup. Uh, syrup, coconut blossom syrup, coconut blossom syrup, um, and along with, I guess, the uh, whatever the pea flour is to colour it. Um, the second rum that I've got here is um, their hell smoke rum. Now, um, it seems that um, Jordan's a bit of a bit of a character, I think, and a, a bit of a prankster, and I probably wouldn't want to work for him because you, you'd hate to know what prank he was going to pull on you next. Um, but anyway, he decided, uh, or the distillery decided, they were just going to do something completely mad, and so they took uh, some of their rum, uh, they, which was being aged in an ex Isla cask, and decided to shove loads of chilies in it. Um, so it included fresh Scotch bonnet. Uh, fresh bird's eye, smoked ancho chili, smoked chipotle chili, and cacao nibs for the hell of it, you know. Um, and then while he was trying to come up with a label, he was doodling on a carry, uh, not carry bag, but a, a, um, a paper bag which they use at the distillery, and suddenly thought, why don't you use that, you know? I mean, I, I just love the guys thought process and and the fact that because it's a small distillery they can do stuff like that i mean you know he was saying about the whiskey which will be released at some stage that that, that they produced is that um they've they've tailored the sort of like that the wash and the distillation to each separate type of oak cask that they're using i mean you know big distilleries can't do that you know um but obviously smaller distilleries can can do this experimental stuff i mean you know and he was saying that that that, that they don't reuse um, the, the heads and tails, you know, so they just chuck it away. I mean, it's like, who does this stuff? You know, that's that's ridiculously expensive. But I suppose the point being is that the heads and tails are generally reused to keep a continuity of style uh, to a certain extent. But when you're making a wash and a, and a dis, distill, um, uh, a distillation for each separate type of cask which you're filling, you know, American oak, sherry and, and, and rum, I believe that they're, they're using, um, then obviously you don't want that because you, you want to keep it all individual. But anyway, that, that's that's by the by. So um, <laughs> these two are going to be completely barking, it has to be said, but uh, I think that sort of fits quite nicely with the distillery. So anyway, um, that's today's lineup. We'll start with the fairly straightforward and end up in, you know, madness, I guess. <laughs> Right, okay, so let's kick off now with the uh, Henston Shropshire Lads uh, Caradoc White Rum. Let's see what uh, the nose gives us on this one, shall Right, okay, so um, it's got a lovely softness. Um, the charcoal filtering has obviously removed some of the sort of real esters, the, the real sort of funky sort of uh, notes, but there's, there's enough there. You know, it's certainly got a, a slightly kind of sub agricoly kind of herbal note to it um 
There's a little bit of apricot, some white apple. It's got a, a lovely rounded, full character. Um, and you know what? The, the big issue that I had, well, I mean, obviously this has not been aged. Um, and the biggest issue I, I always have with English rum is that it's not been aged for long enough. Um, and is generally speaking far too fainty. So hence why they've caramel, um, not caramel, uh, charcoal filtered uh, this, the white rum. That's nice. I like that nose. Let's see what parts are. More herbal, agricoli notes on the palate. Um, a little bit of marzipan, some dried fruit. It's got an edginess. Um, it's a yeah, that sort of agricoli kind of note does kind of linger right the way through. And that I think is what's quite nice about this rum. It's not a full-on in-your-face. Um, off the still white rum and it's obviously not been aged and then sort of you know the colour stripped out so it's got you know all that vanilla -y kind of note it has been filtered to kind of make it slightly more approachable shall we say uh, and um, and you know what I, I really like that I think that's that's a lovely rum right, okay so let's move on to the cherry wood um, now so this is their golden rum 12 months in in new American oak or brand new American oak um, so let's see what the nose goes on this end shall we quite oaky quite sweet vanilla um, slightly biscuity dried fruit it's a little bit of a, a cherry note I don't know whether that is from the cherry wood bit of wood in it or whether that's kind of association um, it's got some citrus, some vanilla, a little earthiness. It's very, but it's very clean. It's very rounded. Again, that's that's lovely. That really is a lovely rum. It's only a year old, um, yet it doesn't smell of you know of, of faints and stuff like that, like some English rums have done. Um, and so, yes, you could argue that um, maybe from a purist point of view, it probably has been filtered again, and then. Um, and obviously aged in brand new casks and you can smell that 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 sort of cask character coming through but on the flip side of the, the coin it's it's a drinkable product you know so you kind of like I said with a lot of a lot of things you have to kind of like yeah toe the line sort of somewhere between sort of you know um, naturalism and, um, and and actually producing something that that people would actually want to drink you know anyway let's see what the past are. Now that, again, that's a lovely palette. It's not hugely complex, but it kicks off with a little bit more freshness, a little bit more citric notes. Um, subtle dried fruits, um, sort of dried apple, a little bit of sultana. Oak starts to come through on the mid palette. You get the vanilla up first, and then the toastiness, um, and the sort of like slight sort of grippy tannins coming through on the finish. Um, but at the same time that citric note kind of comes back with it on the finish so overall I think that's a lovely balance and it's it you know like I said for an English rum um, you know I'm I, I really rate that I think that's great okay so let's move on to the toasted spice rum now the biggest issue I have with spiced rums whether they're from England or anywhere else is that um, more often than not it's all about the spice you know a lot of the sort of like the big brands you know the ones that I'm talking about um, you stick your nose in the glass and you just smell spice you can't actually smell any rum character whatsoever in actual fact you know the the rum purely is just a form of alcohol to carry the spices along you know um, and for me the the, the the only spiced rum that I've really enjoyed is um, the four square spice because it's very subtle, you know, and it's balanced at the end of the day. So let's see if the um, uh, Shropshire Lads uh, one is balanced. 
fennel at first I get lots of fennel toasted fennel black pepper mm, bit of pimento bit of um, rummy dried fruit it's just about on balanced um, it is fairly heavily about the um, the fennel and the black pepper and the pimento um, again it's not the sort of style I'm gonna sort of rave about you know but in saying that if you like spiced rum I think this has actually got quite a pleasant balance in, in essence what I'm saying is it smells of something other than just the bloody spices um, it's a little bit potpourri-ish um, you know a little bit sort of I wouldn't quite go as far as saying perfume but there is a slight sort of perfumed sort of note there um, anyway the pimento gives it a sort of like a, a little bit of a kind of edge a little bit of a sort of like almost kind of a sort of medicinal sort of feel to it um, but then that's possibly also um, the, the, the rum as well and with that sort of slight sort of agricole note so actually you know it's, being fair on it it's actually not too bad um, well that's, <laughs> it's not too bad that's yeah it's pretty good um, for a spice rum um, oh, let's see what it passes me quite subtle again has that sort of potpourri kind of spiciness certainly the black pepper the pimento pimento gives it quite a hotness on the mid palate but not overly hot um, pleasantly balanced again I'm getting some of the rum notes getting some of the dried fruit I think it's a little underpowered um, I think 41 is a I would have personally bottled this at maybe 43 possibly 46 I would have certainly looked at these these different ABVs I know that means that the price that, that the price goes up a little bit um, I think it kind of got away with 41% with the white rum and to a certain extent the um, the cherry wood um, I just want a little bit more intensity yes you've got the intensity of the spices I'll give you that um, but it just felt a bit nice maybe um, and maybe do you know, I'm kind of contradicting myself here to a certain extent. You know, I'm saying that, you know, maybe the extra alcohol would have intensified the spices, and yet I don't want the spices intensified. God, do you know, sometimes there is absolutely no pleasing me whatsoever. Right, okay, so let's move on to the Beaufort Three Tides Smoked uh, Botanical Rum. Let's see what uh, the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Oh yes, that's funky. That's funky. That's herbal. That's smoky. It's kind of oh, that smoke is kind of mm, almost verging on burnt uh, burnt something or other. Um, yeah. Um, ooh, slightly tropical. It's a bit. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of get a bit of a bit of an oatiness, I suppose, but I'm not getting a huge amount of. Um, of botanicals it has to be said but then the botanicals are not the herbal botanicals um, so yes it's got some smokiness um, it's okay it's interesting um, it's not setting my pants on fire but <laughs> it's not hanging me by the neck either um, and I'm certainly not thrashing about um, that's what the balance like Oh my God, where did that sweetness come from? Sharp, it's wit. I don't remember that. Oh, oh intense citric character and, and almost kind of, um, and then there's a sweetness happening, there's honeyed sweetness, there's a bit of smoke. It feels a little all over the place, it has to be said. Um, and it's it's kind of a bit odd. Uh, I There's a bit of rum character, there's a bit of, you know, um, a little bit of funkiness there, but um, it's just got this weird sweetness and 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 citricness, um, which just kind of like just goes, mm, yeah. I'm I'm really not loving that. I mean, it, it. I think 
um, I love their gin. I love their smoked gin. I think their smoked gin is absolutely wonderful. It's like I said, it's something that you sort of think it shouldn't work. Uh, but actually does. Unfortunately, I don't love this at all. I really don't think it works at all. I think for me personally, I would go back to the drawing board with this um, because something is you know, not quite working here. But to be fair, great story. <laughs> Okay, so let's move on to the spiced black rum. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Whew. I mean, that's no shrinking violet, <laughs> the colour. Um, bitter, dark toffee, dried fruit, um, cinnamon-ish. So, yeah, cinnamon, definitely cinnamon. Yeah, cinnamon in there. Cinnamon. Um, touch of vanilla. It's an almost kind of star anise kind of note um, and youthful spirit. It's kind of um, a bit kind of leery, I suppose. Um, I mean, it, it, again, it is what it is. It's another spiced rum. Um, it does have a bit of rummy character, but it's not sort of a huge amount of rum character. It's not It's not subtle, and it's pro that's pretty much sums up um this uh this rum it ain't subtle at all um i think it's one of those where you're either going to sort of like stick your nose in and go wow i love this or or you're not you know um I, i'm not loving it has to be said i can see the appeal let's see what took the part on Oh, it's a little confected, a little overly sweet. There's a bitterness there. I'm getting plenty of cola, um, which obviously would imply mm, a fair amount of caramel. Um, it's sweet. It's vanilla. It's it's a bit of fun, I suppose. It's kind of like yes, if you like that type of of, uh, of rum, um, then you know you're going to love that. Me personally. I don't think it quite has enough rum character. Um, it doesn't have enough balance of 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 of, uh, of the um, spices to the rum. It's just a little bit sort of overly sweet, overly confected, bitter. Mm, just not not my bag, as I say. Right, okay, so on to the final uh, rum of the afternoon. This is the, the Hell Smoked Rum. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Chili. Um, gr <laughs> green chilies. Um, definitely can pick out chipotle chili because I'm not really a big fan of that. Um, it's quite stringent. There's obvious Isla peak smoke. There's brine. A little bit of youthful spirit. There's some caramel. It's a bit of a mad nose, it has to be said, which is exactly what I was expecting. I mean, this is not, not to be taken seriously, you know. Purists just kind of look away um, because it is just basically a bit nuts. Um, it's, and it's not sort of chilled in a hot chilli kind of way. You can you can really smell the fresh chilies, the almost raw chilli. So I suppose if you're cutting them up and, um, and stick your nose next to them, it really is pretty intense, it has to be said. Again, not really my cup of tea. Um, and um, But I can see that uh, some people would uh, would really go for this. Um, let's see what the pass on. Yeah, you can taste those chilies. That chili note just keeps building and building and building, and it's green chilies. It's um, you know, it's a taste of scotch upon it. The heat is building as well. Good job, I like spicy food. Um, it's a bit of a one-trick pony. It has to be said. There's a bit of a bit of dried fruit. There's a little bit of a rumminess there. Um, there's some smoke. Um, there's some earth. 
but it is pretty much chilly central uh, at the end of the day and it like i said it's a bit of a one trick pony it's a bit of fun it's not to be taken particularly seriously um and well you know it, it, it is what it is at the end of the day. Right, okay, so let's sum today's episode the show up. Um, well, <laughs> I thought it was a bit of fun. Um, like I said, you know, sometimes uh, I, I guess um, we all take ourselves a little bit too seriously and, you know, we all, we all get a bit kind of... Um, up our own bottoms I guess and and every now and again you kind of like have to sort of chill out a little bit as they say man um but the uh Henston sort of Shropshire Lads collaboration I really really like this um I I like what Henston are doing um apparently they've um that they're moving from the um the mezzanine level of the uh, the, the brewery to uh, um I believe a, a purpose-built um distillery on some farmland I believe they've uh, um, had a, an influx of uh, uh, of cash and uh, are sort of um, moving on to bigger and well, hopefully uh, or continuing on better things. But anyway, I like I like the white rum. I thought it had character, it had flavour. Um, I like the fact that they didn't strip out all of the kind of um, the, the 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 rum character. It stripped out enough to make it drinkable, should we say? Um, so it kind of like it's a real white rum, but not too real if you kind of get what i'm saying um the cherry wood i liked it I, I liked their golden rum i thought the golden rum was lovely yes all right a lot of oak but not too much oak um again soft um uh, dry, you know rummy dried fruit kind of character um and yeah i mean it, it's it's a it's called the evolution um because obviously you know the cherry wood is going to continue to sort of like you know give character to the uh um, the rum while it's in the bottle so it's interesting it's a bit of a gimmick I guess but you know it's 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 certainly a pleasant product so you know you can't really knock it for that um, I like the spiced rum I think may like I said I think it could possibly be done with being bottled at slightly higher ABV just to sort of make it a little bit more intense um, but I but on the whole I thought the balance was really good I certainly got the spices I got the rum so can't argue with that the Beaufort, um, it just was a, just didn't work. I mean, I don't know why it didn't work. It was just kind of a, there was just a disconnect, certainly on the palate. I mean, um, you know, you had this, this sweetness on, on one side, you had this kind of real sharp um, citric character on the other side. You had the, the smoke and very little rum character. I think, you know, for me, I think, it, it, to being bluntly honest, I think this really needs to kind of go back to the drawing board and um, you know be be, be reblended because it didn't work for me. Um, the uh, West Midlands Distillery Black Rum, Black Spice Rum, it is what it is at the end of the day. Um, there is an element of balance there. I wouldn't say it's all about um, the uh, the caramel and the uh, uh, and the spices. There is a little bit of a rumminess there, but. To me, not as interesting as their gin or their whiskey, um, and I'll be in intrigued to see, you know, when their whiskey finally comes of age. And um, yeah, that, I'm hoping that uh, that I will do an episode of the show on it, not in the not too distant future. Um, and the that the hell smoked rum. Well, like I said, not to be taken seriously. Just take a look at the the <laughs> the, the bottle for God's sake. You know, um, you know, it it, it says. You know, do not take me seriously, you know, in large letters. Well, not literally, but, you know, it, it says that. And, and you can't take it seriously. It's just a bit of fun. Um, and, you know, um, we all need a bit of fun at the end of the day. <laughs> you know, we're, sometimes we all get a bit too serious and, like I said, a bit to our own asses. But uh, uh, and sometimes we need to be just sort of like have, have a bit of a reset. So anyway, um, that stays episode of the show in the bag. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's certainly been a, a little different um so until uh, until next time um good afternoon and good running <laughs>